Hi, today I would like to show you my new PCB laser exposure machine for hobby projects. Some years ago I already built such a machine. It is shown in another video. However, in the old one I used an exotic stepper motor and gear assembly which was taken out of a defective industrial laser, impossible to reproduce with easily available parts. So I asked myself since a long time what the simplest method would be to build a PCB exposure machine out of standard parts with the minimal possible effort. I wanted to avoid expensive, difficult and noisy mechanics. So here is the result. I simply mounted the laser directly on the axis of a cheap stepper motor as it is typically used in 3D printers. Believe it or not, it works perfectly fine for normal hobby projects. Even 0.5 mm SMD pin distance is not a problem. Unfortunately, it was not so simple to use a stepper motor for such a precision task. There are some sources on the net where they tested micro-step precision of motors using typical driver chips, but with limited success. Therefore, I decided not to use a commercial driver but the theoretically ideal thing, a two-channel sine-cosine bipolar current source driven by a 12-bit digital-to-analog converter, which allows the motor to move absolutely quiet in an almost perfect way. The repeatability was very good, but the motor showed significant linearity deviations of more than half a millimeter compared to the expected position on the table. So I did some tests and measured the deviation by printing reference patterns and scanning them to calculate a compensation curve. That kind of calibration worked surprisingly well, not even on thermal paper with 10 or 20 mm per second scan speed, but also on real printed circuit boards. For the brand of boards I have, I experimented with different speeds and it seems that 300 mm per second is optimal but I prefer to make a small test with different speeds whenever I use a new lot of boards. For all those who have problems with developing, the key to success is to buy a scale to ensure always the same concentration of the solution. I typically use 1.5 grams of sodium hydroxide for 100 milliliters water. Be sure that it has room temperature around 20 degrees. Regarding the etching process, there are two important things. Set the temperature a bit below 50 degrees Celsius and, very important, move the liquid all the time if you do not have a professional machine for it. I'm using a simple glass bowl with a car mirror foil heating glued on the bottom. Here are the components of the machine in detail. The laser is an SLD3236 150mW laser diode from eBay. In the article it was described as original from Sony, but I doubt that this is true. Anyway, for a hobby project I don't care. I operate it with 100mA only to be on the safe side. The collimator is an inexpensive one, made out of a single plastic lens only. The beam distance to the moving table of the machine is 24 cm, so that 8 1.8 degree steps of the motor spans 6 cm on the table, which is sufficient for my type of projects. The top board on the back side is an Howland constant current source combined with a transimpedance amplifier to measure the laser power through the monitoring diode included in the laser. I added that just for curiosity to see if and how the laser power will change over time. Below sits the brain, a blue pill STM F103 board. It is definitely a fake, sometimes programming fails and some alternate port functions do not seem to work. However, it's doing its job here. USB works fine implementing a communication device class which appears as a virtual COM port on the host computer. Below the microcontroller, there is a small driver board, hardly visible because of the cables above, with a TPIC 6C596 shift register that includes eight open drain MOSFETs driving the stepper motor on the bottom. 
I removed it from an old thermal printer. It turns a screw rod to move the y-axis of the table. Looking at the downside of the machine, you can see the constant current amplifiers and the digital to analog converter on the left. The converter is controlled over SPI from the STM32. The board with the capacitors in the middle is a central distribution point for plus 12, minus 15, plus 5 and minus 5 volts used for the various components. It also holds a small DC-DC converter to get minus 15 volts. On the right side, there are two DC-DC converters that generate negative and positive 5 volt supplies. These are also used to drive the motor. Well, that's it for now. I hope you liked the video and that it was an inspiration for your own projects.